Hello everyone, this is Cave Monkey Nick, and today I'm going to be reading Twilight, There's a Ghost in Your Basement by Kitsune Raizu, the first and only chapter. Boo. Fluttershy looked across the room at all her animals, from the mice to the birds to the pink fairy armadillos to the tapers and the jaboras to the face-eating scorpions and all the rest she passed by them, whispering a soft goodbye. Upon her back was a knapsack, was one normally used for backpacking. Regular saddlebags just couldn't hold the things she was bringing along with her, and even then the bag was so full that its contents looked about ready to break free and run screaming down the pavement away from their cruel lodgings. She waved a wing, after a brief struggle, to get it free from beneath its heavy load, stopping next to her one primary permanent resident, Angel Bunny, to have a quick few words. Now, Angel, do take care of the house for me while I'm gone, okay? She smiled with the timidness of a shadow when shown the light. You're the stallion around here, so so it's up to you to make sure everything goes right. Angel tapped his big old bunny foot repetitively, arms folded across his masculine lapin chest. Fluttershy winced. Yes, I know, again. I promise to make you an extra super special meal when I get back. Angel tilted his head. When I get back, Fluttershy repeated, mumbling. She threw her hooves into the air, the pose of innocence. I'm sorry, she squeaked. I know I've been going out a lot lately. My friends need me. There's always something or another going on, like Apple Jack's Apple Fiesta or Pinkie Pie's Pink Grapefruit Carnival, you, you know, when she tried to outdo Apple Jack the following week. And then things got messy for a while, and Rarity had that breakout when she lost her hair, and... and... Angel glared. And recently, Rainbow keeps trying, flying into things and breaking different parts of her body, and Angel glared more. Oh, Angel, I'm sorry. Fluttershy lowered her head between her legs, speaking directly to the floor now. It's important this time. My good friend Twilight is having problems. Serious problems. She called me over to help because... Because every pony else is busy, and Rainbow's at the hospital again. Angel rolled his eyes. I know it sounds like a cheap excuse, Fluttershy wailed, clutching onto Angel's shoulders. But it's true. It really is, and I have to go help Twilight. No matter how scary it is, I'm the only one who can help. Fluttershy drew in a deep breath. She was shuddering, shaking. The metal bits in her bag clanked together in time with her rattling ribs. She didn't want to think about it, but the power of friendship overpowered all. I really don't want to go, but I must. Oh, Angel, can't you be supportive for once, please? I really promise I'll try to make it back by tomorrow morning this time around. I'll do my best. I'm really scared, but I just have to go. Finally, Angel weakened. His sharp gauge softened into a buttery mixture of pity and infinite patience. He tilted his head, however, to ask a question. Fluttershy gulped as she trotted to the door. She turned and opened it, the night sky imposing its darkness upon the house, and looked back to the little bunny. Twilight says she's being haunted, Fluttershy squealed. Thanks for coming, Fluttershy, Twilight said, closing the door to the library. It was brighter in there, thanks to a few hundred candles that had been placed very strategically by Spike. It shone as bright as day, and was far cry from the sparse streetlights of Ponyville's wide roads. The bag dropped with a thunk, a rattle, a squeak, and a soft, deflating noise of Fluttershy's back, off Fluttershy's back, rolling a few times before hitting the wall and coming to a rest. To rest. Um, Twilight muttered. Oh, I brought emergency supplies, just in case. I mean, if anything happened. Twilight looked at the bulging package. Is that a shovel? Y yes, in case we get buried. And that thing sticking out of the side pocket is... Maps of the area in a radius of 5,000 kilometers. Oh, and I have three compasses and a depth gauge, too. Fluttershy nodded her assurance. I'm surprised you didn't bring along a full set of armor or something, Twilight remarked, raising an eyebrow. It, it wouldn't fit. I'm sorry. I tried, but Fluttershy, what exactly do you think is going to happen? Twilight's brow furrowed. I don't know, but you never know with g g ghosts. Oh, boy. Twilight sighed. There's so many naughty, nasty things that ghosts can do, Twilight. They can make funny high-pitched noises. Uh-huh. 
Twilight replied, wandering off with a bit of impatience. And they can make the lights go on and off, and Twilight lit another candle on a shelf emptied of books. And they make things float around. Twilight levitated a few cushions into place with her horn. It's so scary, Fluttershy cried. Fluttershy, I didn't say anything about ghosts, Twilight explained, trying to keep her annoyance off her tone as she walked back. Applejack said something about ghosts, and she was joking. What I said is that I've been hearing some noises, and I just wanted some pony to come by and help me check it out. Oh, so you aren't being haunted? No, I am certainly not. You know me better than that. I don't believe in such things. I mean, I would if there were scientific proof, but it's too silly. Ghosts just can't possibly exist. They're not like real magic or dragons or anything. Did some pony say dragon? Spike called out suddenly, sneaking into the room. Fluttershy screamed. She screamed with the force of a thousand angry badgers. She threw her head between her legs, bending over and hiding behind herself. Um, did I say something? Spike asked. Twilight held a hoof to her temple. Yeah, you did. That's all it takes, apparently. Spike plodded over to the shaking figure, feather duster in hand. He gave her a few looks, peering over her form and examining her reaction. Uh, Twilight, is she going to be okay? Does she have, like, a switch or something? Spike asked. Yeah, she'll be fine, Twilight said, walking closer herself. Come on, Fluttershy, up you go. We have work to do tonight. Proper good old science. There's no ghost around here, I'm sure of it. Spike held the feather duster in front of him like a sword, hovering it dangerously close to Fluttershy's flank, muttering something about reset buttons. What it, what it is, what it is can definitely be explained by good old-fashioned logic and deductive process. Twilight went on, smiling at the thought. And beakers, you gotta love beakers. Spike inched closer. Spike, stop that! Twilight screamed. Aw, Spike whined, lowering his arm. Fine, I'll go get some water for her. That would be very nice of you, Spike, Twilight said, hovering over her pal. See, Fluttershy? Water, don't worry. It'll be fine. Water makes everything better. It's a scientific fact. Fluttershy peeked out from between her legs, catching sight of the calming, enthusiastic face of her friend and the rear end of a dragon plopping to the kitchen. Okay, she whispered. Is it really not ghosts? Yes, I'm... It isn't. It's a real thing. It has to be. Now let me explain what's going on and we can get to the bottom of it all. It was already late, and the short discussion dragged them later into the night. Twilight had only casually mentioned it the previous day, but the details merely expanded on what Fluttershy had already known. At midnight, every night, for the past three nights, there had been a knock. It was something simple, something juvenile like the prank of a child or the eccentric keys of a crazy old stallion who wandered the streets looking for candy in other ponies' homes because he had run out of things to chew. But there was never any pony there. The knocks always repeated, and they intensified in duration and annoyance as the days ticked by. But they never wanted anything, and eventually they would go away by their own violation. But why did it, you need me... Fluttershy asked, as she dipped her eyes to her tepid glass of water, which sat on the floor. She stared at it, as if the answers were held within, nothing more than a shake and a twitch of her wings here and there in response to the periodic flashes of her own overactive imagination. A lady lug flew in through a window somewhere, coursing around the room, landing right in the middle of Fluttershy's cup, where it proceeded to take a bath. Twilight, Spike, and Fluttershy all watched in silence. For some reason, among the quietness of the library and the general mood, that had been extremely distracting. Well, Twilight said eventually, um, Spike and I have been unable to figure out what's causing it. I've tried a few simple magic spells, trying to catch whoever's doing it, and the act and stuff like that, but so far we've come up empty. I figure we could use a pair of wings, and honestly, it's just fun to hang out with a friend, right? I wouldn't call this fun, Twilight. It's... Creepy. Yeah, I agree with you, Fluttershy, Spike shot in. But Twilight keeps saying there's nothing to be worried about. There's a good explanation. Well, of course there is, Spike, Twilight responded calmly. Then why haven't you pushed further? Spike stuck out a claw. Why have you stopped investigating? She stopped investigating? Fluttershy asked. Well, sort of. But she knows exactly what I'm talking about, don't you, Twilight? 
Spike glowered. He looked annoyed. I haven't the faintest idea of what you mean, Spike, Twilight said, looking at the ladybug again. It was certainly in the, currently in the middle of a second rinse. Oh, yes, she does, Spike looked to Fluttershy. She's been putting it off. I keep asking her to put some super powerful magic spells to figure it all out. Once and for all, but she doesn't. She just ignores it and waits for it to go away. No, I don't, Twilight squeaked in protest, face a flush. I, there was just never a good time for it. That's because ever since the second night, she's been hiding under her covers with her copy of Magio Geometry 3, a comprehensive guide to the application of algebra and magic field and waveform theory, and she only reads that book when she's upset. I just wanted to have some light bedtime reading. Surely you understand, Twilight looked to Fluttershy as well, both she and her assistant vying for truth. It's a security blanket, Spike pointed a judgmental claw right at Twilight's face. I just, you know, it was a coincidence, Twilight's eyebrows sloped backwards. No, you know what it was, Spike said. Twilight looked away. She made a gurgling noise. To Fluttershy, it sounded like the sort of, that a beaver makes when you gently degas it. I think you're scared, too, the dragon accused. Uh, oh, but, Fluttershy said after a long period of silence, she sounded so confident earlier. At this point, Twilight was stroking, stroking her leg with a stray hoof. Her face was stoic, straining, eyes squeezed shut in stubborn rejection. That's only because you arrived, Spike said. You should have seen her yesterday. Twilight remained quiet. Spike continued, holding up a scaly finger. I mean, I'm no psychologist, but it seems like she's just using her, you to reinforce her own confidence levels by mitigating fears through projection. She's just standing in as the role of the comforter, acting as the voice of, of what would solve her own problems. She needs a proxy, of course, which is where you came in. Spike, how would you... How do you even know something like that? Twilight burst out. I live in a library, Twilight, Spike shot back. What did you think was going to happen eventually? But what about you, Spike? Twilight interrupted, and more, getting more and more worried by the second. Why doesn't she use you to help her fears? That's not what I'm doing, Twilight argued. Oh, she tried, but you know what? It didn't work. Because I'm truthful, Fluttershy. I'm really feeling nervous about this whole situation, and nothing she can say is going to make me feel like everything's going to be fine. I don't know what that thing is, and I don't think I want to know. In fact, I told Twilight yesterday, we should just move in with Rarity or something. And she, and she said, do you know what she said? I said no, Twilight called out. She said no, Spike went on. But she doesn't want to do anything more by herself, and now she's getting you involved. All right, fine, Twilight rolled her eyes, dipping the glass of water with a flagrant disregard of where she swung her hoof. The ladybug started drowning at the sudden tsunami onslaught. Fine, I admit, Twilight rattled on. Maybe, maybe it's a little weird, all right? Maybe I don't know what's going on and I don't like it, but I refuse to let my imagination get ahead of me. Imagination is only good for coming up with theories and solving problems and coming up with delicious, delicious hypotheses. Imagination has no place in fantasy and it otherwise and it otherwise never helped any pony ever. Whoa, calm down there, Spike muttered, holding his hands up. But I'm not scared, and this isn't a ghost, Twilight stomped her hoof. The door knocked. The three of them froze mid-discussion, a slight chill bristling their fur and scales. Twilight's eyes snuck to the clock on the wall. With all their engagements, times had edged past midnight, and it was now four minutes past the witching hour. T Twilight, Fluttershy said, voice changing from a calming zypher to a tiny sneeze. Y yes, Fluttershy? Was that the knock? She whispered. Yes. Yes, it was, Twilight replied. Twilight, Spike said, eyes glued to the door. What do we do? The door knocked twice more, one after the other. Resounding thumps on hardwood echoed through the library. The ladybug rescued itself, swimming to the edge of the glass, where it pulled itself up onto the lip, shaking itself dry. With a buzz of indignation, it took to the skies, flying back up to the ceiling where it could get a bit of rest from all the drama. Not a single one of the three saw it. They were too busy watching the door. Twilight stood back. She was standing a few meters away from the door of the library, upon which someone had been knocking for the past few minutes in an irregular and poignant fashion. The contents of Fluttershy's emergency bag lay strewn around the floor. Spike took the liberty of inspecting its contents and getting equipped appropriately. 
This meant that he now stood at attention, bedpan on head and plunger in hand. He didn't want to know why Fluttershy had brought a bedpan along, but it fit snugly. It's a bit too late to consider now if it was clean or not. Fluttershy was hiding behind the vigilant dragon, ready to persuade him towards the evil monsters if necessary. All right, Twilight said. Now, if the past three days were any indi indication, when I answer the door, there will be nothing there. She grabbed the handle with her magic, throwing the door open. As she surmised, the doorway was empty, save for a leaf that blew past in an errant breeze. Twilight wasted no time closing the door again. I don't suppose you've... You've actually taken a look outside, have you? Fluttershy asked, coming out from hiding. Yes, of course, Twilight replied. On the first day, and the second as well, when we both thought it was just a prankster or something. There's no pony. No one. We even checked during the day. It wasn't a branch swinging in the wind or anything like that. Besides, the knocking is always very methodolo methodological. It isn't caused by a chance event. Could it be some other creature? Fluttershy suggested. Well, the door to the library is pretty thick. It's made out of solid oak, after all. That's why I had the bell installed. It takes a full-grown pony to knock strong enough for it to be heard, and as you heard, it was a pretty loud knock. Twilight nodded towards Fluttershy. Do you know any animal or creature that could do that? Well, they would have to be really strong, Fluttershy said. Something maybe the size of a bear or manacore. Um, nothing that moves all too fast, and surely something that can be seen from a far way away. We also considered the usual things, Spike said, swinging the plunger around, like invisibility spells, or some pony throwing stones from afar, or discord, or Trixie. But none of Twilight's anti-Trixie border protection spells triggered, and this isn't Discord style. He always has to let everyone know he's the one doing it. Something banged on the door again. Almost instinctively, Twilight yanked it open without even waiting for it to finish. There was nothing. S Spike, go out and check, Twilight ordered. What? No way! You must be crazy! Or if you think I am, or maybe you think I am if I were going to go outside... Please, Spike, you're brave and strong, and, yeah, you're not rarity, so that isn't going to work on me, Twy. Spike took, stood firm. Oh, come on, use your imagination. No, you don't have the face for it. What's wrong with my face? Now is not the time to be scared. Now is the time to be brave. Now is the time to take your training and use it for good. Now is the time to be assertive. Come on, Spike, the argument continued. No, why don't you do it? Because you're my assistant, Spike. And you're supposed to lead by example. And you're supposed to take initiative. Yeah, and I am initiating the idea that you go check it out. Take a deep breath. Push all other thoughts out from your head. Focus on the goal. Make up a slogan befitting the situation that rhymes. When scary things knock, your fears you must block. Yes, I checked the last two times. And I checked the first two. So what does that make, Twilight? Four times total. That's right, which means it's your turn. All right, you're ready. You can do this. Hee! <coughs> Fluttershy squealed. I'll shut. Wings, f eyes shut. Wings flailing. She stumbled over herself, blind, falling down, and ending up by a heap of feathers of, as a heap of feathers and sadness. F Fluttershy, Twilight and Spike turned to the mess. I did it, Twilight. I did it. Fluttershy said, getting up to her hooves. Did what? I took a step towards the door, Twilight. I was so scared, but I told myself I could do it, and I did it. Fluttershy clutched her hoof to her chest, a look of pure intensity wrought on her brow. Spylight, Spike tapped his foot on the wood boards. All right, Twilight. He turned to her. I'll go check, but you owe me one, okay? Promise? I promise, Spike. You do this for me, and I'll do you a favor in the future. Twilight nodded to the dragon, stepping back and giving him some space. Spike steeled himself, holding the plunger ever tighter as he wandered in the general direction of the open hallway. He looked over his shoulder for a brief moment before stepping through. He looked left. He looked right. His arms dropped by his side. Well, that's a disappointment, he said, shrugging. There's nothing. Really. Just nothing. I thought I'd see something after all this build-up, like a horrible red glowing eyes or weird slime smoke tendrils, but there's nothing. The door sounded. Thump, thump, thump three times. Spike, Twilight, and Fluttershy stared at it. Did the door just knock? Twilight asked, hesitance on his lips. Y yes, Spike. It did. Twilight responded. But the door's open, Twilight pointed out. Thump, thump, thump. Ah! Spike yelled. 
diving back into the library, scrabbling back towards his master's side. What's going on, Twilight? This is new. This has never happened before. Thump, thump, thump. What do I do? Screamed Twilight, hooves fly flying wildly in a dance of panic. What do I do? Close the door, Fluttershy yelled. But the door will still be there. Get rid of the door, Fluttershy grasped. Throw it away. I can't do that. Just close it first, Twilight. Spike elbowed her in the flank. Ah! Twilight yelped, the jolt causing her horn to flare up. The door slammed shut, but perhaps a bit too much force than necessary. The trio breathed heavily, gasping, waiting. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for that, Twilight shuddered. Three heads swung around to face the kitchen's nooks as yet more noises em emanated from its veggie-filled folds. More thumps, more of the same, more knocks of a hard hoof against solid wood, but this time from within the household. You left the door open too long, Spike railed. See? Now the thing is in our house, knocking on other stuff. It's in here? With us? Fluttershy shuddered. No, no, wait, it can't be. What's it even knocking on? Twilight yelled, backing away. The cupboards, Spike yelled back. The three turned once again, in response, peering up the stairs that led to the second floor. Now it's coming up from up there, too, Fluttershy held a hoof to her mouth. The toilets? Twilight hazard. No, leave my toilets alone. It's going after all the doors, Twilight. Whatever it is, it wants your doors. Spike battered out an explanation. It's moving all over the place like a thing, Fluttershy kept crying frantically. Okay, let's every pony keep calm. Let's just... Twilight breathed out, backing up against Fluttershy and Spike. The three of them stood back to back, circling around as the banging came from all over the house, around them, beneath, above. Each single beat, like a claw on a chalkboard, it was uncomfortable to even think about it. And then, all of a sudden, it stopped. Quietness reigned in the library, not even a breath present to stir the air. Finally, Twilight let her lungs go, sighing a momentary break in the tension. Okay, she chanted, licking her lips. Okay. Okay. That n never happened before? Fluttershy asked. Yes. It seems like it's... Well, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely escalating. It just doesn't fit the behavior of anything I know. Hey, Twilight, I think it's time to expand your theory to other things. Spike said panting. G ghosts don't exist, Twilight muttered, her gross growing weak. They don't. Why can't you even consider it, Twilight? Spike asked, edginess creeping into his voice. I mean, it's not like you're new to seeing strange and freaky things that can't always be explained. Twilight sighed again. Her voice bounced off the walls as she spoke. A hollowness found within, perhaps not merely caused by the space of the library. Fine. I'll... I'll tell you, she said, defeated, as the others gave her rapt attention. When I was young, I used to be afraid. Afraid of ghosts. I used to hide under the covers at night, always imagining the nasty, horrible things found in the darkness of my room. It was paralyzing. Sometimes I would get so scared that I couldn't breathe. The unicorn lowered her head as if in shame, rubbing her eyes with a hoof. My parents and brother tried to help me. They explained that they were just figments, shadows, nothing more. Imagination is what makes them go crazy, and I hated being in that position. I hated not being in control of myself, and the situation, and everything around. I was just so scared over nothing at all. I spent years learning how not to be afraid of silly things like ghosts, and... And now... Twilight? Fluttershy murmured. Twilight looked towards her, in the light of the library, in the constant movement of a hundred candles all casting a pulsing gleam. There was a sort of soft warmth that overlaid the heart of Fluttershy's own internal glow. The pony, normally one always losing her calm, was smiling gently and reassuringly. She reached out to place a hoof on top Twilight's own. There was only one time when she ever let the fears take a back seat. It was due to her nature. And of pure instinct did she bury all of her bury all of her own apprehensions in order to make sure that one of her little babies would not be hurt. There, there, Fl Fluttershy coo cooed, stroking Twilight's head. Don't worry, it'll all be fine. We're allowed to be scared. Fear is just a part of nature, Twilight. It's not about banishing fear entirely. It's about not letting it control us. And trust me, I should know. 
really? Twilight said, sniffing over her frustrations. But sometimes it's just so hard to think that it might be. There, there. Fluttershy pulled Twilight's face into her chest, rubbing her all over. I understand, but we must all face our fears. But if you let your fear of a possibility result stop you from moving forward... But if you let the fear of a possible result stop you moving forward, you're just letting your imagination win again. But don't worry, Twilight. I'm here with you. We're all here with you. Oh, Fluttershy, Twilight cried out, tears welling up in her eyes, grabbing an embrace. Uh, guys, Spike said, what the heck? Are we... are we having a moment? Twilight asked, sobbing, staring deep into Fluttershy's face. Yes, we are. This is. We can conquer anything now. We can take on the world, Fluttershy asserted. We don't have to be afraid any longer. We can both do this. A cold gust blew through the library. It came from nowhere. And all at once, half the candles went out, dimming the lights by a considerable amount. The rooms beyond the one they were standing in were plunged into a murky gloom, and only those small flames that survived the onslaught were left to struggle against the darkness. Um, sorry, I changed my mind. Fluttershy said, pushing Twilight away in the head of, in the head before trotting to her bag. I want to go home now. No, you have to stay. Fluttershy, please, Twilight begged. I'm, I'm scared, okay? I'm really scared. You were right, Spike. I'm scared, and I hate ghosts, and I've been avoiding it. So please, please don't leave. But what can we do? Fluttershy wailed. Look, Twilight. You don't want it to be a ghost, right? Well, I don't like that idea either, and Fluttershy doesn't like anything. It's so true, Fluttershy nodded, sadly. So we just gotta prove that it's not a ghost. How? Twilight replied, eyes creeping around the darkened library. Ghosts aren't there in the first place. Well, how do you, how do you do it, Twilight? Fluttershy asked, stepping lightly towards her. How do you show something isn't something using science and magic? Well, we... We perform tests. We look for signs of what we think they are, to put it very generally. If I wanted to test if water was safe to drink, I'd test for different kinds of poison instead. If the poisons don't show up, then I know the water isn't poisonous. Twilight attempted to explain. Then why can't we do the same? How do you mean, Fluttershy? Let's... Let's test for ghosts. And if the tests come up empty, then we know for sure that it isn't, that it isn't, R right? Fluttershy suggested. M well, well, that's sound reasoning, but I don't know where we'd start. Twilight flailed her leg legs around haplessly like a squid on fire. I mean, we don't have the resources, and I don't know any spells, and, um, Twilight, Spike muttered, looking towards the back of the library through the flickering candles. Yes, Spike. You know all those books you keep putting in the trash and I keep taking out and reshelving and you get mad and I get mad and then we both argue about it and we make up and have spaghetti later for dinner? Yes, Spike. I think one of them could come in handy. The Big Book of Spooky by Cluster A. Buttrose, Twilight mumbled, reading the title of the book. It wasn't simple. It was hiding behind a plethora of stains and drips and tarnishes. The light situation didn't help either. It was still very dark. None of them had gotten had the willingness to light up a few dozen candles again, and they made do with the faint, cold glow in the main room. Spike held one in a candlestick in order to help it along. This book doesn't look very good, Fluttershy said, inspecting the cover. It had a crude drawing of a ghost on it. One of those elongated semicircle things with a jagged bottom. The kind of sketch that everyone draws when they're asked to draw a ghost. Yes, I know. See, Spike? Some pony agrees with me. This is such a farce of knowledge and an insult to the... N no. Twilight. I mean, it doesn't look like it's been taken care of. Fluttershy clarified. She uses it as a drink coaster, Spike explained. Really, Twilight? You, of all ponies? I would never expect... Fluttershy played with her hooves. Well, it's some books, Twilight poked at the tome. I mean, it's like, these aren't... You know what I... I mean, look, never mind that for now, Spike said, saving Twilight from embarrassment. What's important is that I remembered that you had it. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll play along. What's the worst that could happen? 
Twilight chuckled nervously. A few strands of her hair had come loose from her mane, almost as a swan cue, poking out at strange angles. What kind of name is this? Fluttershy asked, running her hoof over the butt. Prench. No, oh, makes sense. Fluttershy nodded. Spike prized the cover open. The large book was, as expected, an ancient collection of folklore and mythologies written in the creepiest font possible with hoof-drawn pictures to match. It was everything one could expect from a book like this. It even came shipped pre-dusty. Let's see now, Spike said, running a claw down the index page. Gee, gee. Right, here we go. Gahadra, Gaki, Gargoyles. Oh, but Gargoyles exist, Fluttershy commented. I know a family of them who live in the Everfree. Garuda, Garm, Gerd. What must have been written with some of these things still not wildly known about, Twilight said. Yeah, you're right, Spike pointed, holding the candle closer. Even griffins are on the list. They're very pleasant. They're very pleasant, those gargoyles, Fluttershy continued. I visit them sometimes and bring them snacks, but you must never give them soup. They can't hold it in their mouths. And here's ghosts, Spike declared, page 121. Well, what does it say? Twilight peered closer as Spike turned the page. But they're very timid, Fluttershy said. Most ponies don't even know they're there because they sit, like to stay very still and perch on things. It's camouflage, you see. And they evolved it against amongst castles and Fluttershy. Uh, oh, sorry. What does it say, Spike? Um, it's written in weird, Spike said. You know, like how Princess Luna sounds when Princess Celestia hides a rat in her cereal. It's just old equestrian. Here, let me take a look. Twilight shuffled over, taking center stage. Twilight cleared her throat and began to paraphrase for the benefit of her friends. Ghosts are a type of malicious spirit that is compromised of the remainder of the soul when the rest of a living creature has departed from our physical realm. Ghosts are created when the heart of a creature has unfinished business, usually due to an overabundance of emotional energy that was occurred during the creature's life. For example... If one were to consciously steal my neighbor's newspapers, like I have been doing every day for the past three years, they will occur a great amount of anger and vinegar ears. No doubt, my neighbor is a ghost now. Twilight frowned, shaking her head. She flipped the book over to the back, searching the last few pages. Um, Twilight, what are you doing? I just can't take this butt rose character seriously. Spike, look, there aren't any references, not a single one. Twilight poked the end of the book. And to base reported fact off personal accounts? That's just ir irresponsible. Come on, Twilight, let's not do this. Now is not the time. This is comp... The complaining keeps me calm, Spike. There, there. Fluttershy gave Twilight a little pat. Twilight, just... Does it say anything about detecting them? The unicorn returned to the original page. Right, let's see. Activities, description, feeding and care... Here, detection. All right, so let's disprove it already and move on to other things, Spike gestured eagerly. First, you must confirm the presence of the spirit, Twilight read. In order to do so, you must do nothing less than the most simple act of asking. In a loud, cleared voice, you must ask, Spirit, are you there? And observe the results. Most spirits will respond, as it is the polite thing to do, and most ghosts are rather up polite when they're not trying to murder you or rearrange your cutlery into amusing and rude shapes. Pass, Spike said immediately. Pass, agreed Fluttershy. Twilight drew in a breath as she rolled her eyes. Fine, she said, stepping into the middle of the main room of the library. The candles flickered once again, sending shadows into a frenzy. Spirit, are you there? she yelled. Three knocks came from upstairs once again. Twilight retreated so fast that she nearly fell over, but scrambled to the book. Eyes widened, while the other two backed against the shelves to gaze in the inky gloom, with hopes that they could catch sight of the thing before it swooped down and carried them off. Okay, okay, uh, Twilight blurted out, harsh racing. Step one, step two, um, it answered, Twilight, it understands us, Fluttershy shrilled. Make it stop. Step one, in order to remove the possibility of it being a living creature, cast a simple detect life spell. Okay, I can do that. I can... Twilight flummoxed, rushing into the middle of the room again. Her horn sparked once, twice, then three times, like a motor being revved up on a cold day. Suddenly, a burst of light expanded from the tip of her horn like a balloon being inflated, and a wave of ener 
strange blue energy swept across the to library and towards the walls. What's going on? Fluttershy murped, as things in her vision started to sparkle in a glorious twinkling blue. She looked down at herself, and even on her hooves looked like someone had gone a bit nuts with the glittering glue. It's a detect life spell, Twilight yelled. Everything in the range of this library that is alive will glow for a while. Every pony look hard for something above us. Fluttershy looked up. There was a sea of blue, of blue above. It looked like a cloud, a huge wave of gently swaying fragments of glass suspended above them. Twilight, what's that? She screamed, pointing at the clump. That's the tree, Fluttershy. The tree's alive too, but anything large and moving will show up against it. Look for thicker, more dense shades of blue within. They peered and poked, scrying their best, but they couldn't see anything. Once or twice, they saw a blur of darker cerulean, but shape and course made, but shape and course made it clear in those shadows that were just that those shadows were just birds passing overhead. Nothing else could be seen on the lower level as well, save the three of them. And soon the effects faded, and they plunged themselves into darkness once again. Okay, Twilight gulped, rushing back to the book. Step two is detect. Okay, if step one fails to show results, check for the presence of magic. I've done this already, but we better make sure, right? We're right, Spike agreed half-heartedly. Okay, detect magic. And go. Another wave, this time green, expanded through the library. Fluttershy knew what to expect and kept her eyes open for anything that might show. The three of them lit up in various strengths, twilight blowing, glowing the brightest, like a lighthouse on the foggy shore followed by Spike, and finally Fluttershy herself, which flickered faintly like one of the candles. This time, however, the tree didn't burst into magnificent green flame, and there were no other lights that sparkled and twinkled through the walls. Just us three, Fluttershy said. Not a single thing above. N no magic and no life, Spike summarized. Twilight stumbled a little, her legs giving out slightly. But like a trooper, she returned to the book. Looking at the final word of advice, she studied intently, whispering to herself, before pulling away to speak to her friends with a muted resignation. There is one last test. The only test left to prove the existence of ghosts, Twilight said softly, eyes watering. If the first two tests fail to show anything, then one only needs to test for one of the qualities a ghost carries with it past death. What is it? Fluttershy asked. D detect intelligence, Twilight forced out. It's an advanced spell, but I can do it. Do you want to? Spike asked, putting a hand on Twilight's side. We don't have to do this. We should leave now while we can and get some pony else to help. Some pony who knows more. No, I have to do this, Twilight said, nodding guiltily. I have to know. I don't want to leave and just drop it. I have to know the truth. Even if that means you discover something you you don't want to? Fluttershy asked. Twilight nodded. I suppose. You were right. It might be something new. But everything's new the first time you find it, right? That's right. Fluttershy nodded too. So? So, Twilight said. So? Spike chimed in. Spirit! Twilight called out. Are you still here? Thump. 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 Twilight grimaced. She still couldn't sit well with the thought. Fine, then. Detect intelligence. Let's do this. The haze spread, a thick gray blob of some odd quantities, from the tip of Twilight's horn. It clung to things like the draping silk off the back of a chair, and fell in layers over everything in the room. There was no feeling to it, though, and bolts of magic disappeared the moment it came up to rest upon a sur surface. From there, two large red glows surrounded Twilight and Fluttershy's head like crimson halos. A tiny, small, tiny blob of pink sat on top of Spike, like a dim light bulb that was about to break at any moment. Hey! Spike glared up at the thing. Come on! Smaller dots of red marked animals in the distance, each representative, representative of anything which showed more than a tiny bit of smarts. Twilight, I think your spell needs a bit of tweet. Spike started to complain. Shh! Twilight whispered. All life had drained from her voice. All chowder had disappeared from her terrain. She didn't bother to explain it further. She just pointed. From somewhere below them, underneath their hooves, in the deep ground beyond the floor, was another halo. 
one that was as bright and large as one of the ones around the two ponies. Twilight sunk down to her knees, flopping on the floor. No longer did she have the energy to stand. She only stared, brain burning itself out on the implications and thoughts and denial. Fluttershy patted over, also sighing softly. Twilight, she told her, there's a ghost in your basement. I'm not going down there. I am not, Spike folded his arms in staunch refusal. You can't make me. I quit. I refuse. I object. I am not going down there. The three of them gathered around, gathered outside the small entryway that led down into the bowels of the library. Like the scene of a movie starring some off-kilter mad horse, Twilight stuffed the basement full of machinery and various types of equipment. It was a mechanical maze of gadgets and contraptions, and it was by its own right a scary room already. Well, some pony has to, Twilight argued. We need to check it out. I still have hope that it can all be explained. Does your denial know no bounds? Spike groaned. It does not, so get down there already. I'd like to stay up here as well, if if you don't mind, Fluttershy added in between. No way, Twilight, Spike responded to her. You made me go last time. In fact, you promised you owe me one, right? Wait, wait, no, but... I'm cashing it in, Twy. It's your turn. You promised. That's not how this works. You can't redeem a promise on the same day it was made. Come on, Fluttershy. Back me up here, Spike turned to her. I'm totally allowed to, right? Um, if I say yes, can I stay up here? She asked. Yes. Then yes, Fluttershy nodded profusely. Betrayal! Twilight gasped. You're the one who wants to take a good look at the thing, so get down there already, Spike rumbled, holding up the candlestick. Twilight snatched the candle out of Spike's paw and the bedpan off his head. She fitted it onto her own, her horn poking out a little bit in the front, which Tet didn't have a rim. Fine. She stepped to the doorway, peering down into the pitch. Fine. She took two steps down the stairs. Fine. She stopped. The basement hadn't been lit. There was not a single source of light to be found within since Twilight had not foreseen the eventuality that she would ever need to go down there in the first place. All that meant is there was nothing there to keep her company but the tiny ebb of a flame at the end of a wick. Anger and impatience gave way when a sharp pain shot through her chest, jolting her and waking her up to the reality of her situation, and it froze her in her tracks. All she could see were blobs of shapes. She knew what they were. She knew what they were. After all, she'd placed most of the things there herself. But in the night, they took different form. Stands and beakers became claws and teeth, and large cabinets became hulking bodies of amorphous monster jelly blobbities. She jumped, shuffled down the stairs one at a time, not even blinking for fear of something would appear in the split second that she averted her gaze. It was silent, eerily silent. There was also the noise of hollow, that sort of empty space echo that all big rooms have was the kind of thing that makes everything a little bit more quiet and dampens the ears. It gave you a generous coating of velvet until all you had left was your own heartbeat, pounding out a tattoo in your head. You can do it, a voice squeaked from above. Fluttershy sounded a million miles away. Twilight had finally reached the bottom of the steps. Show yourself, she demanded as she stepped forward into the pit. I know you're there and you've been messing with us. I don't want to hurt you, so just... Come out, and we'll have a talk like grown ponies. Twilight swallowed. There was no answer. Is is any pony there? She asked. She winced, scrunching up her face. Something smelled terrible. It smelled like rotten meat and death. It smelled like the backside of a thousand cows. It permeated her skin and crept into her mind, and she couldn't help but burst out coughing at the stench. There was nothing she knew that could cause such a terrible odor. Something creaked. Something bent and bowed behind her. A piece of metal, perhaps, or something else entirely. Her eyes widened, her legs stiffened, and then there it was. Thump, thump, thump. The knocking of a hoof upon wood, the reckoning of a sound within a hole. Twilight stepped forward and away from it, inching back to the stairs. Even though she refused to look initially, she turned, trying to catch anything out of the corner of her eye. It was clearly there. Whatever it was, it drew her, her it drew her from her peripheral vision into a full-on look as she spun around completely to view the spirit in all its vestige. 
It was a small, white thing with undefined edges. It sat on top of a table, shuddering and shaking like a ball of wax in constant flux, but most remarkably was that it glowed with a pale and eerie yellow light. It wasn't bright enough to show anything more than what appeared to be a slight translucency, but it most certainly had an ethereal glow, like a figure at the edge of a pond. It would like a figure at the edge of a pond in all the tales that were told. It opened its eyes, two gigantic bright red eyes, each tapering to sharp points. They looked like the eyes of wolves, but much larger, and they hovered there above the figure in a disconnected way. They slanted a bit too much. Twilight knew that the creature was looking at her with judgmental fervor. Twilight dropped the candle and ran. Do you think she's okay? Spike asked, standing up above. Why? He had barely finished his question before Twilight came barreling out of the basement, snatching him up by his collar and throwing him onto her back. Spike, we, 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 we're leaving. We're going to Rarities, she said, heading straight into the door. Fluttershy, go home and lock yourself in. I'm calling Princess Celestia tomorrow. She can take care of this. She can burn the library down. Twilight? Fluttershy raced after. What did you see? Twilight stopped outside the door, the cool air of the night refreshing her slightly. She looked Fluttershy up and down, mouth flapping open and shut. Behind her eyes, she still carried the images of what she saw, something horrendous that seared into her brain. I don't want to talk about it, Fluttershy said. Go home, Fluttershy. Please. We have to leave this place right now. Oh. Oh. Fluttershy sobbed. Is it true? Was it really? Yes. Yes, it was. She ran all the way home. She burst through the door. She cried from the stress and the fear and the growing confusion. Whatever it was that Twilight saw was so horrible, so disgusting, that... that... Angel peeked out from a corner behind his hut. It was this again. He rolled his eyes, giving the floor quick three thumps with a powerful foot. It was a signal that the other creature's house knew, go away. Fluttershy needs her space to cry everywhere. Only Miss and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Firefly stayed for the moment before a sharp glare chased them and their family back. It was time for talk later. Angel plodded up to Fluttershy, who had lain herself down next to the roasting fire. Angel had thoughtfully started it a bit earlier in, in anticipation for her return, fueling it with gathered grasses, old mushrooms, and bits of leftover stinkweed. The rabbit cradled the pegasus in his tiny stubby arms, giving her a well-needed hug. Angel had always been there for her, of course, the one to always comfort her at the end of the day when things went wrong. Oh, Angel, Fluttershy sniffed. It was horrible. I've never been so frightened in my life. Angel gave her a pat on the shoulder. There was a ghost. It really was. It made noises all over the house and moved through the walls. Trees were interesting con constructs. The bigger ones had little tunnels, crawl spaces, places behind the walls and between floors. And it created such a horrible racket, it could even knock on doors when the doors were open. Sound echoes. It's sometimes hard to pinpoint exactly where sound comes from, especially when a resounding noise like a thumping of wood. Sometimes you just have to be in the right spot for it to sound like it's coming from something rather than behind something. And Twilight detected a de cast a detect life spell, but we couldn't see anything, so whatever what was causing it must not have been alive. The funny thing about camouflage is it works better when you don't move. Sometimes someone could be staring right at you and they won't even see. It's the things that move around it that get caught. It's a simple, basic rule. That's what the gargoyles in the forest did. And Twilight saw something incredibly, incredibly frightening in the basement. Something very intelligent, and she didn't say what. She was just so traumatized by it. You could see it in her eyes. Imagination was a powerful thing. No doubt about it. Angel perked his little pink ears up, the ones that looked like elongated eyes, grabbing Fluttershy closer for one of his patent angel hugs. As she sobbed quietly into his shoulder, streams of her tears dampening the floor, he gave her nothing but his resound resounding support. Oh, Angel, Fluttershy wailed, I'll never go back there again. I just want to stay here with you, where it's safe and calm, and nothing bad ever happens. Angel nodded. He was all right with this, after all. Whatever made Fluttershy stay with him was always a good thing. Fluttershy continued to pat Flutter... He continued to pat Fluttershy on the back as he began to muse how everything was going exactly to plan. First rainbow, now twilight. Two down, three to go. Angel smiled. The end.